It's my pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this session uh, called Connecting the Dots, Enabling Africa-Europe Collaboration in Digital Health. Um, we are very uh, grateful to the Africa-Europe Science Collaboration and Innovation Forum for hosting us and giving us the platform for this dialogue, for this collaboration. Um, I'm very happy also to uh, collaborate on the session with Rizwana Mia from South African Medical Research Council, who is uh, co-hosting the session with me, and it's there in Brussels at the at the Embassy of South uh, Africa. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to travel to to Brussels, but I'm very happy that this. Uh, the technology allows me to to participate fully in the session and also join my colleagues uh, joining from different parts of the world um, online. Um, just a very short introduction to the session, and then I will pass to uh, to Rizwana why we are doing this session and what the uh, key objective of the session is. I think that many of you, at least um, uh, many of us here. Um, that are participating in this in this discussion uh, have heard about the Africa Union European Union Innovation Agenda. The agenda was uh, agreed in uh, July last year, um, but we also know that uh, out there um, among the innovation ecosystem, not everyone is so aware what this agenda is actually about, and maybe it's not so much aware what are the opportunities for collaboration. And I think that we have uh, a lot to learn from each other, uh, a lot to discover, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot to unpack. And this is what the session is about. So the session is, is meant as a dialogue, uh, not only from all of us presenting here to present to the world, but to present to each other, to actually uh, make some valuable connections that um, hopefully uh, will then result in some joint collaborations, joint uh, project. So please uh, treat us as it as it is that we are we are talking here uh, to each other and we are exchanging knowledge, uh, learning from each other, and those are also the core elements of the of this innovation agenda for collaboration between the two continents: uh, knowledge exchange, uh, capacity building, and building the innovation ecosystem. So this is what we uh, want to do here in the area of digital digital health as the ECH Alliance. This is the our core um, for work, for business. So I will pass to Rizwana uh, there in Brussels. Uh, good morning, Carolina, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's wonderful to put this uh, panel together for us uh, from the ECH Alliance. I am Rizwana Mia. I'm from the South African Medical Research Council, and I'm uh, happy to be co-chair to Carolina today. I'm going to start off by just giving, setting the scene, um, ensuring we understand that, you know, enabling collaboration between Africa and Europe in digital health involves several key aspects, and we need to touch on those. Today, the dialogue should unpack um, establishing, you know, communication channels and platforms, fostering partnership between digital health companies, uh, research institutions, and governments on both um, continents that can accelerate uh, progress, investment in infrastructure, which is key, especially in the African context, uh, in, and uh, education and training programs, and promoting regulatory harmonization between Africa and Europe, which has been a key theme through this uh, through this meeting from uh, day one. So I'm going to start off from the top of the list on my side, which is um, for our esteemed panelists to please introduce themselves and uh, and then comments with your uh, part of the dialogue as we move through uh, speaker by speaker. So thank you so much. I'm going to hand over to Jean-Marie from uh, Global Health and EDC CTP three joint undertaking. Jean-Marie. Thank you, Rizwana. Thanks a lot, everyone, for having me. And good morning, all. Good afternoon for those who may be far away uh, with other time zones. And so I'm Jean-Marie. Call me Jean-Marie Jean-Marie Vianna I work for the Global Health EDCP three joint undertaking. Uh, many of you know it as EDCTP. This is a third program uh, which follows what is referred to as EDCP two and EDCP one. 
we are part of the Horizon in Europe. As a trend undertaking, those two previous programs were under Horizon 2020 and earlier under FP6 and FP10. So this is a partnership between a number of countries, 28 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and 15 countries in Europe, plus the European Union represented by the European Commission. This global health uh, EDTP3 donor undertaking supports clinical research taking place in Sub-Saharan Africa, tackling infectious disease, uh, using knowledge uh, that is shared across both Europe and Africa. So the groups with support are made of European and African researchers primarily, but also in collaboration with other players across the globe. Um, those are the few introductory words I'll, uh, I'll say before other speakers talk. And, uh, Happy to be here and looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Okay, we hand over to Innocent. Um, Chibona. Chibona. A and online. Innocent. Yes, Innocent, uh, you can hear us. Uh, yes, I can. Yes, great. Would you introduce yourself and and what brings you to this uh, session to this uh, Africa Europe collaboration? What's your angle? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Nosen Chiboma from uh, Minister of uh, Health Zambia. And um, I'm involved with um, digital health um, in the country. Uh, we have been deploying uh, digital health uh, solutions in the country uh, for, for the past 19 or so years, uh, involved in the development of our, our very own um, electronic health record system. And um, so we're here to really uh, showcase what we're doing, but also to see how we can be able to collaborate um, as a country, as a region, um, and together with uh, uh, Europe, to be able to, to make sure that our technology can be able to help us in terms of um, uh, resolving issues in the health sector, as you know, um, this is a, a critical issue. The issue of um, of uh, all these emerging diseases is an is a big issue, and and we believe that uh, digital is really the way that can be able to assist even low uh, to medium income countries to resolving some of these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Innocent. Um, we'll go hand over to Andrew Kamara. Andrew, you can. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> Hi, hi. Uh, yes, yes. No, it's it's uh, Andrzej Dabkowski. So uh, first, let me thank you for for inviting me and the Africa Foundation uh, to join this interesting uh, discussion. So I'm the uh, head of AU EU policy tracking at the foundation. And uh, for those who don't know the Africa Foundation yet, we are a independent multi stakeholder platform that works to connect the dots between the African and European strategies and agendas with a view to unlock uh, opportunities for stronger cooperation uh, that can benefit by both uh, continents. And for us at the AEF, uh, we have focused on, on health and looking at health in a broader context, including uh, through, through digital health, since the very inception of, of, of our foundation a couple of years ago, because obviously health is a, is a core pillar of Africa cooperation. And we're very happy to join this conversation uh, one, to, to learn from, from all the esteemed guests and contributors uh, about the uh, possibilities, opportunities of digital, digital, digitalizing health, uh, but also in a, in, in, as, part of our, uh, as, also as part of our work that is to do with monitoring the Africa and the European commitments that have been made uh, over the last uh, two, three years, uh, mostly stemming from the last uh, AU-EU summit uh, of February 2022, which included strong focus on health but also included focus on, on innovation. And uh, obviously the, the AU-EU innovation agenda stems from, from that initial commitment. So very happy to be here and looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew. Um, I hand over to Amit. Amit. Uh, Amit Tucker from Africa Health Business. I see Amit here in the in our virtual room. Okay, maybe we come back to Amit uh, in a second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's go over to Justina. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you so much for being invited. It's really, really my pleasure to be here and have uh, all these uh, amazing panelists around the table. So I'm Justina, I represent European Digital Academy Alliance. Our association is a joint effort of um, 30 EU and neighboring um, countries. And we work for our national and regional associations, as you can guess, with ICT SMEs, so small medium enterprises in the digital sector. And all together, we represent around 45,000 companies across Europe and the neighboring countries. And of course, as the name says, we work in the innovation field that is very wide, so it does not encompass on the healthcare. But I must say that in recent years, especially for COVID, we have seen such a growth in interest of our companies, uh, specifically in the healthcare sector, that we even launched the first vertical working group in our community, which is on healthcare. So the importance is there. And we see more and more interest, and we have a lot of companies um, collaborating with counterparts in the African continent. So many of them establish partnerships, many of them invest, and even more of them go there to look for talent, for outsourcing, and for collaboration, because we have a big lack of um, talent and ICT potential here, here in Europe. So facing this crisis, the collaboration with um, uh, talented uh, ICT professionals in Africa becomes really crucial for our members. So in this background, I'm really, really happy to be here and talk to all of you. Thank you so much, Jensina. Um, we hand over to Felix Sukus from the University of Health and Allied Science in Tanzania. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon and evening, uh, wherever you are. So this is uh, Felix Sukums uh, from Tanzania in East Africa. As you said, working uh, for Moimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences, but also a founding member of uh, Tanzania Health Informatics uh, Association. So I'm, I'm joining uh, this forum representing academia and research institution, but also, as you said, civil society organization, which is professional association Tahia. I have uh, several hats. One, uh, working as a senior lecturer, uh, researcher at uh, the university, Moimbili University. But also, I'm a member of National Technical Working Group uh, uh, in Digital Health, and also working with the East African community as a, a facilitator and consultant in the area of digital health and innovation, uh, and an uh, expert working group on uh, digital health, innovation, technology, and data. So a bit of uh, some experience in the space. And now, uh, as, as part of the MOHA's initiative on leading Digital Health Alliance, it, uh, we are promoting innovation through organizing various events, capacity building events. We organize annual Digital Health Innovation Week, which has a number of events uh, in line with our, or in collaboration with our partners in the Global North as well. We have MOU with a number of universities um, uh, in Europe and other parts of the world to promote capacity building innovation and research in uh, digital health transformation. So um, I'm glad, uh, we're happy to share our experience in uh, the undertakings that we have been uh, uh, conducting, but also learning and relearning a lot from uh, our colleagues. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you so much, Felix. Uh, appreciate you connecting from Tanzania. Um, David from IQV. Hi, um, and a pleasure to be here. And apologies, I wasn't able to be there in person, but it's uh, certainly a pleasure to join online. Um, so I'm David Franks. I lead the global public health activities within IQVIA. Um, and for those of you who aren't so familiar with IQVIA, uh, we're a large organization. We have about 90,000 people in over 100 countries. Um, primarily, we focus on three things. We're the world's largest clinical research organization. Um, so we run, at the moment, about 2,500 concurrent clinical trials globally. Um, we also do a lot of work with the life science sector um, and largely focused on uh, helping to ensure their interventions, you know, medicines or, or other medical interventions, reach the right patients. Um, and we do that by generating a lot of evidence um, and supporting them in their commercialization activities. And finally, we take a lot of the, the same type of capability and we apply it directly working with governments, with payers, with hospitals and providers and, and public health institutions in the in the healthcare system. Um, it's, uh, you know, and we do all of that by bringing together, 
you know, expertise across data, across technology, the human capital, the scientific and epidemiological and, and clinical expertise, um, and really bring that to bear on, on ensuring that, you know, decision making can be better informed by evidence, uh, that data can be better leveraged within the healthcare system and ultimately drive better patient outcomes. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here and, and happy to talk further about our activities specifically in, in Africa and, and Europe as we progress the conversation. Thank you so much, David, for my I really appreciate you joining. I'm going to hand over to Arthur uh, in the room. Uh, yes, my name is Arthur Serra. I am the Deputy Director of the i 2 Foundation. It's an IT research center in the city of Barcelona, in, in Spain. And at the same time, I am a member of the, in the Council of European Naval Living Labs. Uh, from the i 2 perspective, we have a long uh, experience in working on e-health. Uh, the Department of Health of the Generalitat of Catalonia is the, the regional government is a member of the i 2 Foundation. We have a model of i 2 Foundation that is participated by the regional government, the city of Barcelona, universities and companies. Uh, in that sense, uh, we can provide some expertise about how to digitalize our health systems. But our point now is uh, from the COVID lessons, how these health systems are in a very uh, interesting situation because they are redesigned themselves. The COVID produced a kind of tsunami uh, that bring uh, not only the sick people in the system, but every citizens and that produce the emergency of a new model of health we call salutogenic model that combining with a pathogenic uh, make the, the solution and we are interested now in a European project called Integer is an uh, it's in coordinated and support action in pillar three how these two models can develop a new uh, health system in, in Europe and, and worldwide how the combination of the social digital and traditional you know, um, pharmaceutical and medical approach can renew the health systems and how every member of the society, not only the traditional uh, medicine and patient relationship, but also um, universities, uh, cities, for example, the cities are beginning to discover the healthy cities model. They, they are beginning to engage in the health system and um, that produces the possibility of creating this kind of living lab model that everyone will engage in redesigning and rethinking the, the new health healthcare system. And this is our research program we have we have put on the table. At the same time, we are pushing the UN all to become a more global community with the African living labs. We have a project with the Senegal in living labs and expect uh, immediately the South Africa Living Lab Network will be also connected with them all in order to expand uh, the redesign of the health system, not only in Europe, but at, at the global level. Thank you so much, Anto. I'm going to hand over to Solvi, and I saw that Amit is also now online. So please, Solvi, go for it. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for inviting me to this event. Uh, I work with the European Commission, the executive agency uh, for small and medium enterprises. In particular, I am a project manager of the Horizon Europe uh, program, uh, which uh, the predecessors already uh, mentioned about it. In particular, I work for the ecosystem, so the quadruple helix stakeholders, um, and uh, particularly with the innovative uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, I have been invited here because I am uh, managing uh, three to four uh, projects of this kind uh, that come uh, that have been funded from the Horizon Europe uh, that are related to um, to digital health in particular. And um, I wanted to uh, highlight that the main beneficiaries and the main partners with whom the European Commission and the agency is working are the member states, the 27 member states. However, uh, we have uh, been launching uh, in uh, on the 11th of January a new call, which is particularly uh, connecting the dots between uh, the EU and Africa uh, in different fields. I will talk about it a bit later. 
but uh, this is something new for us as well. And I'm absolutely looking forward to this uh, new challenge to be working with the uh, African continent. Uh, thank you. And I'm looking forward to share and to contribute to, um, to this um, discussion between you together. Thank you so much, Sylvie. Uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Amit Tucker to please introduce yourself. I, I hope you can hear me. And if you can hear me, just let me know that yes, the yes, sound is coming you. through. Yes. Yeah. So my name is Dr. Amit Thakka. Thank you for giving me this chance. Um, I am the executive chairman of Africa Health Business. We are based here in Nairobi. We work across 39 countries in Africa. And we work very closely with African continental institutions. And for this particular topic, Africa CDC is in the center and forefront of designing what you call the roadmap and the architecture of the digital system that we want to adopt and promote within Africa. We have organized 12 flagship initiatives which will structurally change the digital health format in both public and private sector in an affordable organized manner. And one such initiative is known as the Africa Digital Health Network. And ECH Alliance is a great partner that we are working with. And many of you already know of these structures and systems. So I'll be looking forward to sharing some of those collaborative engagements not only to open up models of engagement, but also it will now create a systematic marketplace. The marketplace, which will enable us to have the right products, right services at the right price through the right partners. Excited to share this. I hand it over back to the moderator. Thank you so much, Amit. Uh, Carolina, I'm gonna ask you to kick off the session. Thank you so much. I think like we already learned so so much through those um, uh, introductions. Uh, I think that some of you know each other and worked together, but for for many of you, the the other actors, the other partners are uh, new. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm really happy to already uh, create some connections at at this stage. And I think that the uh, what Amit uh, has said about the Africa Digital Health <laughs> Network is also. Uh, worth unpacking, as as you said, Amit, uh, there is a roadmap architecture, uh, something that will uh, define the, the, the near future of the digital health in Africa. And for all of us who would like to collaborate with Africa, it's worth uh, knowing what this architecture, what this roadmap uh, is, so that we are able to align our priorities, our actions. Um, but for this, I, I would like to first also ask you all and very basic questions. You might think, oh, my God, this is like, you know, the, the most generic questions we might have here about the, the biggest challenges and biggest opportunities. But honestly, I would like to, to, to know what are your what is your view from, about the biggest challenges uh, and perhaps more on the biggest opportunities in this collaboration um, you all represent different actors. Some come from, from public organizations, from the universities, uh, from those uh, organizations like similar to ECH Alliance that connect, network, facilitate collaboration. Uh, but also we have like, like, they, uh, like David here, uh, big companies operating uh, globally. So I, I wonder how this like opportunities look from your perspective and also from European and African perspective. And maybe if you can also give us a bit of hint of expectation. So not only opportunities, but also expectation for this collaboration. What is really, uh, what you would really need then to uh, boost this collaboration or understand this collaboration better. Um, and I think that some of you already have uh, like very good collaboration, as, especially like um, Africa Europe Foundation, it's all about that. Um, but then for, for some of us, those are the first steps and, and uh, learning. So I don't know, maybe actually I will start then with, uh, from you, Andre, like as this is your daily work and you also mentioned those commitments. So I, I to be honest, I'm also 
very curious to hear where we are with those commitments and if we as uh, this innovation ecosystem uh, we are able to also help uh, fulfilling those commitments one way or another. Uh, th th thank you, uh, Carolina. And uh, indeed, um, I think for us, it's, it's, it's a kind of a bread and butter of, of our daily work in terms of connecting of, of key stakeholders from both Africa and Europe around the priority themes, priority areas uh, that's, that underpin our cross-continental cooperation. And, and here, as I mentioned before during the introduction, health has been and, and is a central pillar for Africa Europe cooperation yeah and and I think what we can see in terms of the transition over the last couple of years especially is that the pandemic uh, that we all lived through has accelerated the, the transition to, to digital health and it, I think if I want to phrase some uh, opportunities so this is where, where we where we are yeah the greatest opportunity is to build on the momentum that has been achieved both on the African and the European continent in terms of the speed of this, this, this transition. But I think we need to also maybe take a step back to see the, 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 the bigger picture, yes? And since the pandemic, also since the, the summit that I mentioned before, uh, which, which has been over two years um, uh, since, the health agenda has been globally deprioritized yeah, from the political agenda. And this is a, a risk uh, for, for all of us, uh, where we see that the health outcomes and the strength of the health systems across Africa and Europe has been weakened and hasn't recovered. And so if I can see first, first challenge is about how to ensure that health remains on the top of the political agenda and how we build and connect health to, to other areas to make sure that it uh, remains relevant and it contributes to strengthening the resilience of those systems. And I think linked to that, what we've also witnessed is, is the uh, continuous persistence of often health being treated in a siloed approach. And, uh, and uh, the work of our foundation since, since its inception has been to look at across the silos to, to see how the different sectoral work is connected. And I think that's where the con conversation here around the innovation and digital and health is so important. What we would like to maybe particularly point to towards is that we need to look across the link between health and climate and, and look at digital transformation as an enabling factor that can address some of the climate uh, uh, risks that affect uh, health. In terms of the opportunities, I think I would, I would maybe look at a at, at few things. One, in, uh, in, in the AU currently has been designated as the year of education, and we see the digital education as an important factor there. The, uh, we, we have noted in the, in the strategic document that especially digital education has been noted in, in skills development and in green transition. However, there is opportunity also to highlight this important aspect in, in health. Yeah, currently it's, it's missing there. But uh, we also want to maybe show to an opportunity, which is to look at the, uh, at the needs past 2030. Yes, part of the work of our foundation is to con constantly scan the horizon to understand what are the future needs. And what we've identified through leveraging our multi-stakeholder expert platforms is that the need for a future health workforce is something that we need to pay particular attention now. So now is the opportunity to do that. And what we've noted is that in more, it takes on average between six to 10 years to fully train uh, health professionals. And so right now we have the opportunity to rethink the type of curricula that they need to be trained against to make sure that they can fully leverage the opportunities that digital health can bring which we see as a transformational aspect that can help achieve some of the global goals, including the universal health coverage. So maybe I pause here, uh, Karina, if you want to follow up and I can invite other speakers. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I, I think like this is uh, this is a very good uh, way to, to invite other speakers, but uh, immediately what, what came to my mind when you were talking about uh, health being deprioritized from the public agenda, I wanted to maybe, well, you don't have to comment on that, uh, Jean-Marie, but I was thinking that this would be, that uh, that uh, nicely would, would link us to, to, to those um, from the policy making side and, and a bit administrating this collaboration. Uh, side if if we can hear also yeah. from you I don't know if you agree about that or or maybe disagree and then what is your view on the opportunities challenges so I pass to the room thank you Jean yeah let me just address the uh this question on 
opportunities and challenges and comment to, to, to what's being said. First, the maybe talk about the challenges. I'll talk about first the challenges that made our organization um, come to, to life, but the, the so-called poverty-related diseases, but also neglected diseases. These are questions that are very big that cannot be addressed by one country, by one institution, by one region. So the, to, to tackle these kind of big challenges, there was a need for a partnership. So a partnership between Europe and Africa was born long before the AU-EU partnership model was uh, set, this agenda was set. So 20 years ago, there was a need to address these big challenges. Poverty-related diseases and neglected diseases, infectious diseases that affect Sub-Saharan Africa, but also are clearly a social, political, economic problem for, for the whole planet, for, for Europe, uh, in Europe included. So uh, that's a, uh, these challenges can be addressed from multiple angles. The first application was to say uh, biomedical, clinical, pharmacists, uh, all those who are maybe engaged in preventing or treating these diseases can come together, do research. But many years later, we did realize that actually the uh, technologies are evolving very fast and science is also evolving. So there was a need to integrate the, this digital element in the research we do. So uh, developing these interventions, whether it's vaccines, diagnostics, or treatments, uh, one needed also to harness what we are getting from the, 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 the fast evolving technologies. Uh, then we, I, I jump back to the opportunities. Maybe I'm going fast uh, since we don't have the whole day to go through these challenges that we have. But the key words for challenges for me were the poverty related diseases, but also neglected infectious diseases. Opportunities, uh, it is, uh, let's say, that partnership which was there long before we started talking about a, an agenda continent at continent level. So the partnership was at the level of researchers. But now we have this opportunity that two continents are coming together with a political message uh, that we need to tackle these issues together. So uh, at this base, what I look at, um, if I look at, I grew up in Africa, I, I'm working here, but I do have uh, very strong memories of the challenges we had uh, growing up, but also those opportunities that were what I'd call the, 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 the homegrown creations, inventions. Um, I look at, I was with this runner a few last year at the conference in South Africa, and there was a session where uh, local researchers, um, IT um, guys who are maybe my age or younger than me, were showcasing the, 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 the research. So I realized actually the opportunity we have is these homegrown inventions, which actually Europe will also gain from. So when we talk about technology or knowledge transfer, it's not one way, it's becoming two ways. So there is an opportunity for, I'm starting from Europe, to actually get knowledge from those inventions taking place in Africa. If you look at the health sector, I think the, the community context in which uh, these developers are working, it's, it's actually a good opportunity to harness what is coming out of these uh, communities, whether it's one individual or institutions or, or research labs that are coming up with solutions that addresses uh, village level issues or province level issues, whether it's climate health or infectious diseases. So these are a big opportunity I see for me. It's, a, it's, it's there what we need to harness uh, from the base that is not being dictated by these high level political agendas, but what is coming from the, 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 the talent and minds of uh, those on the ground making the problem. So uh, coming back to to what maybe my organization will be doing to, to, to harness these uh, technologies, it is to bring together the researchers from these two continents. Uh, we do have a model where the funding that we're talking about uh, from Horizon Europe, there are conditions set there in, in the base that you, you have to come as a team so you have to be already a partnership, um, whether you are two or three institutions. It's already that partnership, Africa, Europe, uh, group to really for funding. And coming back to this digital topic, uh, in the last two, three years, we've been integrating these digital elements, digital solutions into every call for proposals you launch, whether it's HIV treatment or malaria vaccines or talking about plasmonia uh, uh, treatment or TB diagnosis. The digital element is coming there as any other most important element that we've been putting in the research uh, in the course for proposals. 
Uh, so this, remember, I'll stop there for now to give opportunity to others to, to others to comment and come back to questions that will come up as we go. Thank you. Caroline. Yes. Sorry. Uh, if you allow, I would. Um, I think it would be nice to segue to Amit as we as John. That's what I want. wanted to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, Amit, can you can you also uh, like react to that? Yeah. And and I think this is a good moment to tell us a bit more about this roadmap and architecture and and uh, for for the digital health in in Africa and how this can help us uh, solve some of the uh, challenges. Yes, let me do that uh, in a few minutes. First of all, I think it's relatively new that we are creating the digital architect and the super highway for Africa. It's, it's, it's really after the pandemic. So number one, we're looking for partners. There are two simple ways to get involved in the entire African digital fabric. First is to be engage with us like ECHA under the Africa Digital Health Strategy 12 flagship initiatives. And any institutions like AEF and any other institutions in the room like ECHA, and we are using ECHA as an entry ticket. And Carolina, from your network, if there are large institutions or NGOs or organizations we would like to have an institutional partnership. That's a very easy way and we can show them the 12 channels and they can select the channel that is most appropriate for them to get involved and we make them part of that team or you call the task force. That's number one. So I think um, literally an, an email or a conversation and Carolina, if you can get it, we will introduce them to the right committee leads. This, the other one is if you are an, in, an organization, but not an association or an institution, you're a direct corporate, you are an entity, you are a company, and your interest is to change the digital health framework in Africa. Again, we would love to hear from you and you would then be a designate member a designate member as a friend of Africa, whether you're Oracle, whether you're Microsoft, whether you are SAP, wherever you're from, we want to bring those organizations because their strength can help us. So the first way of getting involved is collaborative partnerships as an institution or an organization. The second way to get involved is bilateral relationships. So under EU-AU framework, as you all know, our relation between EU and AU is pretty good. It's amazing. And we tend to exchange great amount of ideas. In AU, there's a specific commission called the Health Commission. One of the 12 commissions is the Health and um, Human Settlement Commission. Africa CDC, now, as you all know, was just given its autonomy as an independent institution in the AU. So under digital health discussion, the, we've parked it under Africa CDC. The leadership on the digital health framework and the digital health strategy is the ex-minister of ICT of Rwanda. And he is very welcoming and Carolina, next time when we have a suggestion, I think we will invite Jean Philbert to also, as the leader in this process, uh, introduce the partnership and collaboration. So I extend the two ways to collaborate, the bilateral model and through the collaboration space as an organization or as an institution to work with us on the digital highway or the digital health architecture framework for Africa. There's a lot to do, but this is the process. Let me stop here to see if we can get some questions and uh, feedback uh, from the team. Carolina, over to you. 
Thank you so much, Amit. But maybe still, can you open a little bit, like, what do you expect from this collaboration? So if someone is coming, right. joining, what would you, what would you like right. to, to, to get? So, so why we should collaborate in, in the other so The way? collaboration is really to create solutions. Many countries are looking for different solutions that will enable them improve the digital health matrix. Let me give you back to basics. Majority of the countries are looking for electronic medical record solution, EMR. So there's a lot of discussion around EMR. And if we start listing them down, we will be able to create a compendium of opportunities that exist, that have been identified by the country. So it's demand driven. It could be EMR, it could be telehealth, it could be areas around supply chain, digital innovation, it could be dashboard, it could be disease management. So under digital health, the opportunities vary from country to country. The second thing we're looking for is making a marketplace that I mentioned earlier. During COVID, we made a marketplace called Africa Medical Supplies Platform. It really worked well. We knew where to buy gloves, disinfectants, uh, ventilators, PPEs. So if we were to create a digital health marketplace forum, we would be then looking for partners to help us make a strong marketplace. Then we're looking for people who can help us populate. And through that marketplace, we'll be able to match supply and demand. And many organizations in Europe have already managed successfully to provide solutions, be it in telemedicine, be it in EMR, be it in analytics, uh, and maybe even using blockchain and uh, managing substandard and counterfeit management. So the list can go on, but I hope Carolina that gives just an overarching model that you asked for. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Amit. I think that this is this is uh, like very concrete call to action and opportunity for for collaboration. Uh, before going further, I just wanted to let you know that uh, one of our uh, participants here, uh, Pedro Nunes from Portugal. Uh, is uh, kindly asking if uh, someone who is uh, joining online would like to share uh, their contacts, maybe email or LinkedIn profile uh, to connect as they are looking for collaborative opportunities with African uh, entities in healthcare sector in the field of teleimaging, tele rehabilitation, and digital uh, pharma. So this is just there in the in the chat. Um. Sorry, Carolina, can I ask Amit one question before we move on to uh, the next speaker to unpack challenges and opportunities? Amit, um, just as a premise for everybody, as you uh, have put a very distinct call for action and invited uh, our participants, just a little bit more context in terms of the company you work for. How are you mandated? How are you funded? What other offerings besides the collaboration connections that you're offering? Right. Okay. So, yeah, so that's a good question. Right now, the funding, entire funding is been self-financed. So partners have self-financed the different committees and the meetings. There have been partners under the Commons Project. Uh, let me give you ideas like MasterCard Foundation uh, are real good champions. Uh, Novartis Foundation, just mentioning a few, they have been in the forefront, including GIZ. I may not have the list of all the partners, but there is a lot of foundation and donor funding that's helped Africa CDC reach this stage. I think that the next step will be to find actual funders for each one of the 12 initiatives, and we are creating a governance and an overarching model uh, that will hopefully have a more sustainable financing uh, structure. So, so it's work in progress, it's evolving. And um, if any of the partners have some suggestions, we would love to hear for that, for that, as, for that as well. And Africa Health Business itself is embedded within the Africa CDC, is that what you're saying? 
Can you repeat that question? Uh, your company, Africa Health Business, is it um, a spokesperson for the digital arm? Oh, ah, yeah, is okay. Right. I am actually yeah. the co-chair. Africa Health Business is the co-chair of one of the 12 flagship initiatives. Africa Health Business is an independent entity, just like Microsoft would be, or Novartis would be, or PSI or PATH. And these are all names that are involved in supporting this digital health strategy. So Africa Health Business is a co-chair of one of the 12 initiatives, which is known as the Africa Digital Health Network. Uh, PATH, which is an NGO, which is a US-based NGO, and Africa Health Business work under Africa CDC for one of the initiatives. We also work across different spectrums on healthcare, not only digital, but today's forum is focusing on digital. Africa Health Business is an independent, bespoke health consulting and an investment firm based in Africa. I hope that clarifies. Thank you so much. Um, Carolina, do you want to move on to the next speaker? Yes, I would like to. We also have uh, representatives here of the of the academia, of the of the business, and and of course uh, still the European uh, Commission. But I would like to then uh, maybe um, hear from from the university perspective. So here, moving to to Felix or from the academia perspective, uh, Felix, if you could uh, give us your uh, your view and uh, on those uh, opportunities, challenges, and and expectations. Thank you very, very much, uh, Caroline uh, uh, and the team. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to really listen from uh, the great speakers uh, in the room. And uh, most of the issues or challenges that has been discussed uh, also in line with what I wanted to talk about. But I think the, the major challenge is around the, the key theme of this session, which is uh, connecting the dots. So there are, lot, there are lots of uh, uh, dots that are not connected especially around uh, people-centric uh, digital health transformation. So we have been talking about uh, systems not talking to each other, uh, system interoperability or fragmentation of the system. But from our uh, discussions that we have had is uh, the major challenges around workforce or capacity building, uh, digital health education uh, and training. And this can be also uh, uh, evidenced by the recent uh, release of digital global digital health monitor, which is a kind of a state of digital health uh, globally. And an area around the, the five components, workforce is an area that have scored very low, uh, especially around digital health maturity levels. And this is around, do we have uh, digital health education as kind of pre-service or long-term programs? to really produce experts who can uh, support the transformation from one planning of digital health interventions, uh, design implementation, of course, in collaboration with other stakeholders in the space. And then of course, other areas are around alignment with strategic priorities, whatever interventions that we are designing uh, should be aligned into the existing national strategies. So if you look at uh, the, the, the landscape, um, most of the African countries have digital health strategies. We have our, we are finalizing the second review of ours in collaboration with UNICEF, Ministry of Health and other government institutions. And we did a bit of a comparison with, for example, our strategy with the, the WHO, Germany, at least to uh, emulate the collaboration that we have between uh, the Global North and Global South. And uh, we have, as I said, Alliance, Digital Health Alliance, after assessing the gaps, we thought people are not talking to each other collaboration within the uh, public sector, public health sector, but also private academia, but also civic society organization. So we are using quadruplehelix model, which has been mentioned by one of the speakers, in terms of bringing together different stakeholders to have a platform to discuss all these initiatives and major areas that were identified after co-creation workshops uh, early last year with the ministries of health from Tanzania and uh, Zanzibar, other stakeholders, academia, private sector, four areas where the thematics issues that were raised around strengthening leadership and governance in digital health transformation. Mean having uh, policymakers understands 
what do we need uh, in terms of strategic investment, funding, but also coordination of various uh, uh, fragmented interventions that are happening. We have these vertical programs, we have uh, other initiatives in public and also private sector. So these are the dots that we need to connect through platforms that bring stakeholders together. One, as uh, indicated, creating awareness of what is happening. We are using a lot of digital public goods, which are free and open source. Of course, you need a lot of uh, skill sets to implement this, but this, I think, uh, for the African continent, even the landscape that we did in uh, uh, across East African partner states, it's we need to really leverage on already existing platforms. We need to share uh, resources in terms of digital health platform that has been implemented. The likes of EMR, if you have a, a well-functioning EMR in Kenya, why not use in Tanzania as a public digital good? But of course, you need to have experts working on this. And an area that we, we really focus is, as we said, uh, strengthening leadership and governance, but also having implementation research. This has also been highlighted by one area. So uh, having assessment of what is in place to understand the ecosystem so that uh, before developing a new intervention, you already know what is in place. The skill set to design with people as one of the principles for digital development. So these are capacities that we need. But we also, another uh, dot that is not connected is uh, the, the digital divide. One is youth being uh, uh, a larger population of African continent and with high penetration of mobile technologies, internet increasing, the youth are pro technologies, but they are not integrated into the health system to really understand how the health system works and how they can contribute with the innovation. We have student innovation ecosystem, for example, in, at our university, Mwimbili. One of the areas that we are working is how do we link them with government institution if they need data for their innovation. They need to work with private health facilities, when they need to work with government institution to get this data, but also to understand the problems and what is already in place so that you don't reinvent the wheel. And another area that we are working on is bringing women and girls into the ecosystem so that they are part and parcel of uh, digital health in the ecosystem, but also we have digital health competencies for the healthcare workers, health managers, policymakers, and as well as digital health professionals. Thank, so thank these you, are areas that, that, that we need to work with the, our global partners, especially mm. to learn from whatever development that they have done. And this is a cross-learning. The partners from the European uh, 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 space, they have a lot to learn from our system, uh, systems, especially understanding uh, health challenges in the, in the context and cultural uh, uh, specific aspects so that we bring in meaningful innovation and uh, digital health transformation. Over to you, Caroline. Thank you. I think you you uh, you um, tapped into a lot of uh, issues also uh, highlighted in the Africa Europe uh, Africa Union uh, European Union Innovation Agenda, uh, bringing youth to the innovation uh, processes, bringing girls and and women and and uh, all the all the partners. Uh, maybe one uh, one additional question, a short question to you, Felix. You. Um, Talk both on the on the um, academia side, but also the the public policy side, and you you talk about the digital health strategy for for Tanzania. Can you give us just a, a glimpse in the in the strategy, but from the perspective, what is the overall objective of the strategy or ambition of the strategy, and if there is anything written there about the, the 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 this global collaboration and what the international partners can. Uh, support or maybe how Tanzania wants to what Tanzania wants to bring to the world. Do you want to comment shortly on that, and then uh, we will we will pass to Innocent to to hear more from the the ministry side. So th thank you very much for for that uh, great question around um, what the uh, Tanzania Digital Health Strategy, of course, in line with the W the Global uh, Strategy on Digital Health. Uh, we are looking at not the technology, but how do we address health uh, challenges or health system challenges that are in place. So we have about, um, uh, we have five goal, strategic goals looking at strengthening leadership and governance for the health system, but also for digital health uh, specific aspects. So around making sure we have right appropriate digital health solution, which are also affordable, 
but inclusive in terms of interoperability, but uh, uh, taking on board uh, different uh, 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 users in the health system. So you look, we look at all the preventive, promotive health uh, issues, but also in terms of service delivery aspect, electronic medical record, disease surveillance systems, but also looking at how do we properly manage health resources, be it supply chain, health workforce, and financing. So we have uh, done uh, uh, several initiatives that are supporting all the six health system building blocks. So and strategic priorities are also aligned to uh, the service delivery, commodities, uh, vaccines, but also we have a specific area around research, innovation and development, which include also collaborative research and capacity building initiatives to ensure that we have competent uh, uh, stakeholders. And as I said, competent stakeholders, we mean policymakers so that we can have the right policies uh, and legal and regulatory framework in place. We have experts in the digital health space, health workers and health managers are able to use, but we also have solutions that are used by the public, be it mobile applications, social media platform. How do we create and create local content, relevant local content for uh, provo uh, health prevention, but also using this platform to adhere to treatments and the like. So there are a number of initiatives that we can still work on. And as I said, I'm also part of EAC. We still uh, we have still have a lot to do with data analytics capacities, data governance aspect, uh, promoting uh, seamless and secure sharing of health information so that uh, we are saying that uh, disease has no borders. So we need capacity building. So how do we ensure that we share health information uh, to prevent disease outbreaks, but also to manage whenever they, we have pandemics, and also addressing issues to do with uh, misinformation, disinformation, and, and all related uh, aspects. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you so much for for unpacking this and giving us a bit of uh, a better understanding of those of those priorities. I think that yes, health data is also a very important part, and and we can spend some time on this. Then uh, moving to, to, to Zambia and then like to, to Innocent, uh, a lot has been already uh, said um, about the different uh, priorities, ambitions. Um, Felix also mentioned the strengthening the leadership. You, you work in the, in the ministry, so I don't necessarily want you to, to comment on that part, but I would like to, uh, to, to invite you to, to give uh, your view on those opportunities for the Africa-Europe uh, collaboration on digital health. How does it look from from the perspective of the of the Ministry of Health? Yeah, yes, thank you very much. And um, I think agreeing with uh, what the previous speaker had just said, uh, our biggest challenges, I think, are the issues to do with the workforce uh, in terms of their their abilities, their skills, and just. Um, it, in relation to digital health in terms of how they relate to, 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 to digital technologies. And then of course, the issue of leadership and governance. In our experience, I think we've seen that where we have a strong uh, leadership um, and governance at uh, uh, ministry level, the, you make progress faster. And I think uh, the progress uh, is, is sustainable as opposed to having a lot of investments, having a lot of uh, innovations, and there is no central leadership from, from uh, the Ministry of Health. Um, immediately those uh, innovations or the funding for those innovations uh, dries up, uh, they, they break down. And um, probably as a result of that, there's actually quite a bit of confusion because there, there is a lot of money and, and the goodwill from donors and so on. But uh, there is no um, actual progress that's being made because there's no ownership at government level, and uh, so we believe that is a, like the, one of the biggest things, um, the issue to do with leadership and governance at government level. But then, of course, uh, as I've mentioned, the issue of the skills of the uh, health workers. We recently conducted the skills assessment, and uh, that's one of the major things that we're looking at. And when when you when you find out, you find that the the um, this this is a common problem um, across. Um, when you look at uh, the 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 results from the Global Digital Health Monitor, uh, we believe I think it's, it's across uh, the continent, probably even beyond. Uh, the issue of workforce uh, really really scores low. Um, um, in in that regard, so we we think that this is like the major. Um, the, these are the major um, 
uh, issues that need to be dealt with uh, before you get to the, of course, we have the issues of uh, connectivity, um, we're trying to get connectivity to the, to the, to the uttermost part of, of the country. We are dealing with the issues of cybersecurity. This is uh, uh, new for, for, for a lot of uh, uh, sectors um, in Africa and uh, government sectors. They, they're picking up digital now and uh, cybersecurity is really something new. It's not, it's not something that they, they uh, very much understand. The issue of data governance and, and uh, uh, regulations and, and policies and, and, and things like that, compliance, the, the, this is a big area. Um, I think one of the things that we saw during the, the COVID is that we, we were trying to collaborate across countries uh, through Africa CDC, but um, in terms of, for instance, data sharing, the countries don't have any guidelines for that. They don't have any policies for that. And so it was so hard to, to, to share data with the neighboring country uh, concerning COVID and, and because you don't have the underlying, uh, underlying legislation and policies. And, and so the, these, these, I believe, are some of the big things um, concerning that. But then, of course, we are being faced with the issue of um, power or electricity. We, we think that uh, there's an opportunity for, for, for us to, to diversify in terms of um, uh, power sources and uh, using solar probably and, and other types of renewable energy because we are being faced with a huge um, climate change. I mean, the effects are really being felt. I mean, the countries in the region, I think a number of countries are experiencing severe drought, never experienced before, probably only in the 60s. And uh, there isn't enough um, water to generate electricity. A lot of our countries depend on, um, on uh, hydroelectricity. And so this is definitely going to affect um, the, 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 the digital rollout. But we believe that we still have that opportunity to, to utilize uh, the good sunshine that we have, you know, for to, to do to do solar as a and and also being innovative in in the kind of devices that we use um, in the health facilities. It's not the normal type of devices that we're going to be using in the, in the health facilities or communities. We, we have to use low power devices, probably solar uh, power devices, etc. So we we believe that these are opportunities that are there for Africa and and Europe to uh, to learn from each other. Uh, because uh, I probably, as, as I said, when we're talk, talking about the issues of climate change and uh, all the issues to do with the environment, we, we have uh, the opportunity to, to stop or reduce the next big um, um, epidemic uh, if we were to go digital now and to, to ensure that uh, digital, um, uh, digital uh, systems are used so that we can be able to take this uh, quicker than we did for COVID because um, the way that we are going about, we know that it, it can actually be worse. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, thank you so much. I, I think like uh, we, we can uh, now also uh, break here. I, I think you, you mentioned, especially like the what, what I pick up now is the health data. I mean, here in the, in the, in Europe, we will have the voting of the, on the European health data space, I think, today. So if that goes through, this will be a, a great breakthrough for us in the region to on the on the sharing the, the data and uh, health data. And this is also interesting to see how we can expand this collaboration to Africa and uh, on the also partnership terms. I think there is uh, there are some controversies how some uh, companies are uh, from Europe are are uh, using uh, the health data from Africa, not necessarily in the most ethical way. So I think that this is also one of the very important uh, discussion. Um, but with this, maybe I will then move to to David. So we heard now from from academia, from the civil society organizations, from the from the government, and I I wonder um, how you at uh, the very big global company. Uh, look at this uh, collaboration between uh, Europe and and Africa, and what are what what opportunities do you consider, and where the challenges lie that you would like to maybe solve with the uh, joint collaboration? Thank you. Sorry. And, so um, sorry, David. sorry, uh, Rizwana, yeah. Uh, so sorry, David. Uh, before you go, um, Caroline, I'm so sorry to do this, but Justine has to leave in ten minutes. So she's in the room. If 
David, if you don't mind, could we please uh, hear from Justine before she leaves, and then we move on to David to give us the industry input. Uh, I got a lot more questions also for you, David. Uh, so I think we're going to be very long with you. So. <laughs> Yeah, of course, please. But then, no. Okay, yeah, Justine, thank you so much. Ahead. And and uh, uh, Justina represents the SMEs, so maybe that will be like one yeah, step, I, yeah, uh, building stuff. Yeah. We have David as very um, compatible in the way since we both speak from industry point of view, so I'm sure we might agree also on many points. And I'm so sorry for interrupting like this, and thank you very much for giving us the floor. Uh, I think we have so much to discuss, and there are so many interesting points we could spend the entire day, not sure. Um, 75 minutes session, right? So getting back to opportunities and what we see, so I can only perhaps echo what um, many, many good points brought on education and training. And I think Felix has presented some perfect examples of how how they train and we have different focuses and training. And uh, from our SME perspective, I mentioned in the beginning that we have really big problems with ICT talent here in Europe. And um, we have great collaboration examples already. Our German association, Bitme, they worked with uh, ICT chamber in Rwanda. And together in the last two years, we trained more than 500 ICT professionals, 80% of which got employed either by Rwandan or German companies. So this is one very small example in one specific country. But we can do so much more. Uh, I believe, with all this type of programs and collaborations. And that's extremely important, especially for small enterprises for which it's very difficult to, to compete for talent in big companies um, here in Europe, especially. Uh, so this is one probably very important point. And then the other one, um, also building on what Anik said and uh, some very, very, very good proposals that he raised. I think what we have in common in both African innovation ecosystems and here in Europe is that um, the structure of our innovation ecosystems is very similar. So we ride on small entrepreneurs and startups that more and more are popping up, especially given the young population of Africa, we have a lot of people with very, very good innovative ideas and young entrepreneurs. And here in Europe, we have a bit similar environment. Perhaps we are a bit less successful in some some parts of Europe with startups, but SMEs is really the rising pillar of our economy and also in digital health advocates. So having these similar structures, we really need to post, foster what we can do. We, we have to learn from each other how to build on this strength of the small players, how to help to connect the small players with big companies. Also because the small companies, they are the ones that know the best the needs of their local ecosystems. So they are the, the, the best position to address the niche problems in every ecosystem, and that's very important in healthcare because we cannot apply solutions uh, that result at all. We have very different societies, different ecosystems, and as a minister, the ones operating in them and knowing the best we need locally. So I think there is a lot to learn from each other and a lot of partnerships we could create in this field. And perhaps the last point, and I'm sure the that here we will have a lot in common, and Carolina, you also just mentioned the data. I think that this is an immense opportunity for Europe and Africa to collaborate. Uh, building on uh, healthcare data space, I know already in Europe we have multiple questions and results in that. And uh, expanding to other regulatory environments and so on will be very, very challenging and will take a long time. But uh, the opportunities that lie there are also absolutely immense because we have big problems fighting uh, data bias and we know that in healthcare it's even more sensitive and way more important than in any other sector. And if we could plug the data we have uh, by African companies, players, healthcare institutions, and so on, and here in Europe, we could really achieve so much more. Uh, the, the opportunities for algorithms to learn and the possibilities to resolve different problems, if we can combine the data sets we have, are absolutely amazing. And we should really, really be looking into this. And I'm sure that for all data driven companies here in Europe, but that would also open up a lot of doors and same for African counterparts. So this is good for fighting data bias. This is great for data sharing and building our algorithms that are much more inclusive and can result of much bigger amounts of data and problems much faster. Thank you so much, Justina. That's a lot in terms of uh, what the requirements are. And it's interesting to also hear uh, about the challenges you have, which we didn't anticipate. I think in my mind, I didn't mm -hmm. think it was uh, a true thing that you're actually lacking that innovation angle, um, especially with the resources you have at your disposal. 
So thank you so much, Justina. I really appreciate your input into the session. Uh, Carolina, I think we can now uh, move on to David if there's not, no other questions for Justina before she goes. So I don't know if anybody has any questions for her very quickly. All right, I can just pull any of you. I will drop the link to, to check out our focus group health care. Yes. We are, uh, it's open, it's uh, your class, you just need to create an account and we are gathering together different stakeholders to discuss exactly the collaboration issues between small enterprises and public sector, public buyers, um, bigger players, bigger companies. As we see, we need to create ecosystem and encourage buying small and looking at intermediate solutions. So I will drop the link and feel free to, um, to join and perhaps also collaborate in future events. Marketplace is one of the ideas that has been greatly discussed in the events we, we had before in the healthcare focus group. So uh, that really contributes also to what Amit was suggesting on, on that regard. Thank you so much, Justina. Um, okay, David, over to you. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, Caroline, you, uh, you've uh, posed your questions. And for David, I also want you to think about it. I, I can see you've got many clinical studies running in different places in Africa as, uh, as, a, as a business. Uh, you know, you also meet the same challenges in terms of the bandwidth, in terms of implementing digital initiatives within these clinical sites across the continent. So uh, maybe you can also give us some insights about how you conduct your business then uh, in the face of many of these challenges that some of the speakers have also highlighted. So thank you so much. Over to you, David. Thank you. And um, I mean, you know, as you mentioned, we, we're, you know, actively involved in, in you know, a lot of uh, digital programs and, and research programs uh, across Africa. Um, we were involved in the Smart Africa program to build an African digital health blueprint. As you say, we're running concurrent trials on the continent. We're, you know, very focused on how to deploy digital innovation and technology into hospital settings in, you know, in order to stimulate better research, uh, understand patient pools and stimulate you know, foreign investment into the continent when it comes to research. But, you know, the challenges we see are no different than the challenges that have been called out. You know, um, I don't think we see sort of different or, or, or new challenges. I think the, you know, accelerating the adoption of these technologies and innovations, you know, requires leadership and governments. It requires, you know, a stable regulatory framework. It requires human capital. Um, digital literacy, I think, is a problem not just within, you know, the the software skills and the digital skills you need to actually build and, and innovate, but actually across the, the system as a whole, healthcare professionals, managerial professionals, government professionals who need to have an understanding of how data and how technology and healthcare can actually be an enabler. But I think, you know, notwithstanding all of those things, and, and there are clearly some very strong opportunities for cross collaboration with Europe, particularly on the regulatory side, which I think have been called out. But I think what, you know, one opportunity I think is, is really important to focus on. And one thing we're doing on the clinical research side, and I think could easily be applied to the digital health side, is to build a stronger economic case, you know, for a lot of these activities to take place. Um, you know, on the research side, we're working very actively with Africa CDC, with other stakeholders to develop an economic framework that helps to, you know, helps government, helps leaders, helps politicians to really understand that investing in regulators, you know, investing in uh, these particular skills, they don't just drive you know, the immediate health outcomes that people might typically think of when they're thinking about trying to tackle, you know, communicable disease or non-communicable disease, but actually they stimulate an economy. Um, they stimulate foreign direct investment, you know, from international companies who want to bring research into Africa. Um, they stimulate healthy people who are contributors to a stronger economy. And I think on the digital health side, you know, it'd be really interesting to think about you know, how well and can that economic case be made stronger, particularly in certain countries when that cross-departmental, cross-ministerial leadership is not there, or the investment in the kind of regulatory strategy to support it is not there. 
because I think the economic case is really important. And, and you know, one of the other speakers talked this morning about homegrown in innovation, about the opportunity to export innovation, you know, whether from Africa to Europe or whether within African countries, you know, from Africa to Africa, um, there is a huge nascent opportunity in terms of uh, innovating around, you know, AI and healthcare, around large language models, around what, um, you know, what technology innovations that can be homegrown can actually drive, you know, significant healthcare outcomes, but also can be scalable. Um, and to do all of that, you know, you need a stable regulatory framework. I think, you know, the EU and Africa can learn together on AI because I don't think anyone has a, a, a really strong and stable regulatory framework yet for AI and healthcare mm -hmm. because it's such a nascent field. Uh, you know, it's been talked about data and data sharing. I think that's an area where the EU can bring a lot of experience from GDPR. Um, I think that's very important because without a strong, you know, stable regulatory framework for data sharing, um, and obviously the the kind of data privacy and, and cyber security has also been talked about, you know, the interoperability, cross-border use of data, you know, where countries can can deploy and host data and, and cloud and et cetera. Um, and I think there's a lot of experience from the EU can be leveraged. Um, but my, I guess my broader kind of point, and I'd be interested to hear the thoughts of others on the on the panel, is um, whether or not you know an effort can be made to make that stronger economic case for digital innovation um, in Africa, and whether that can be used to lever more leadership and more support from the political strata um, to actually invest in some of these initiatives to harmonize regulation and and bring more human capital whether it comes from europe whether it comes from other places to do the training and the skills development but ultimately that economic case for investment thank you so much david and i think like this actually applies to any part of the innovation no it's not only to the digital health so it's also a a very good point to to consider for wider collaboration the same for for exchange of data that does not have to be only on the on the health but i think that this is what you said about the stable regulatory framework that without that we actually like cannot move forward strongly with this uh, with this collaboration and export some of those uh, innovations from africa to to europe the other part was also something that maybe we don't always take into account, at least from our perspective uh, here in Europe, is that obviously the, the market of Africa, 50 uh, countries, that's also something that we don't, we see it. I, I actually have a book, like I've read this recently. I don't know if you see, Africa is not a country. And I think that this is also something that the, the very important thing to remember that Africa is not a country. It's, it's uh, so many different markets and also uh, different regulations there. Uh, thanks so much. I don't have any immediate question to David. I don't know, Rizwana, if you have. Uh, uh, is the Arthur? Did you did you uh, raise your I hand or? Study, uh, yes. Yes, I want yes. to hand over to Arthur. We have Arthur. a speaker who would like also to to yes. say something about that about the. Okay, then chat. Arthur, we will pass to you so you can comment and then uh, also uh, give you your intervention. Okay, uh, my point is e health. Uh, Took a dramatic change before COVID and after COVID. And I think why I highlight this kind of uh, aspect because COVID put on the table the, the enormous importance of IT. And one of the reasons is because uh, COVID affected to the 100% of the population, not only to the sick part of the population. And this is very important. Our health system are organized under the relation between doctor and patients. That means if you are not a patient, you don't need your health system, okay? Because your health system is based in this relation. You come to a doctor when you are sick. If you are not sick, you don't need to come to a doctor, okay? That's created a kind of system developed in Europe and in, in so-called developed countries based in the relation of the sickness. It's called the pathogenic system, okay? But the COVID suddenly, it was totally different. The, the, the medical discourse changed completely. The medical discourse was stay healthy in your own. This is totally new. This is not the relation between patient and the doctor. 
is relation between public health officers and the 100% of the population. Every citizen should be engaged in the health system. And that created an enormous opportunity to expand it, the IT technologies to everyone in every country in the world because pandemic was a global problem. And that created a, a, a situation totally different in relation, in relation with the e-health. Before the pandemic, e-health, it was a matter of the traditional health system. It was electronic with records, it's all these kind of uh, things related with the hospitalocentric health systems. But after the, during and after the pandemic, e-health was the, the way that the 100% of the population beginning to connect with this kind of new health system. And that changed a lot because staying healthy means keep your own health yourself. Have an, 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 an style of living healthy in relation with food, in relation with exercise, in relation with social relations. It's a completely different approach. For example, suddenly the local authorities understood that they are engaged in the health system. Normally the health system are centralized in the Minister of Health. City has no competence on health. But the people asked to do exercise on the roads, on the streets, on the parks. And that beginning to create and reinforce the idea that the cities and the urban should be also healthy. And it was suddenly the moment of an existential industry like the agriculture was, it was impossible to stop because it was essential for keeping food in, 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 in. And that created a connection between the food system and the health system. Food system is not only for exporting agriculture products, is for keeping your population alive, healthy. Arthur, uh, apologies for, for interrupting here for the sake of time. Would you like to comment on the opportunities of the collaboration in this area between Africa and Europe? Yeah. Or uh, we, we still have five minutes and we would like to hear from Sylvie as from the European uh, Commission. So uh, yeah. if we can move to, to, the, to the part of collaboration. Yeah, my, my last point is Africa is the health, is the youngest continent in the world. The kind of problems, healthy problems that Africa has are completely different than the kind of problems we have in an aging continent like Europe. I totally agree with this collaboration between Africa and we need to learn each other. It's not, it's not enough selling to Africa how to solve the health problems in an aging continent like Europe. We need to establish this kind of learning, mutual learning collaboration because maybe Africa is developing more community-based solution or homegrown modern up solution that we learn, we should learn for them. And now with the digital tools, we can do it. This is my, my last point. Thank you Thank so you. much. Very, very yeah, uh, valuable point. And, and for sure, this is also something we would like to force to learn from each other and not, uh, yeah, bringing our, uh, input our knowledge on someone else. Yes, Rizvana? Uh, I, uh, thank you so much, Atur. I want to hand it over to uh, Sol. So if you can take the floor and sure. give us an idea from uh, your portfolio perspectives, what are you seeing coming in? What are you, um, what are the outcomes so far over time in terms of the Horizon Europe investments? Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank all the predecessor speakers who indeed have introduced correctly so uh, the path to, to my short intervention. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, it's quite new for Horizon Europe to uh, be working with the collaboration platform between uh, Africa and the EU. And based uh, in this framework, um, we have launched the call on the 11th of January. And tomorrow, it's the deadline at 5 o'clock for the closure of the of the. Um, for expression of interest for the beneficiaries and candidates to apply for this call. As I mentioned, the aim is to foster the existing and to create and establish new links between um, innovate and innovation stakeholders uh, between the two continents, uh, particularly in the innovative ecosystems, including also the social innovation dimension. Um, Talking about challenges and opportunities, let me first say that, in my view, there are more opportunities than challenges. But of course, I would start with the challenges, <laughs> because when you start something new, you always have to start with the challenges, but then 
bigger opportunities will be open afterwards. Um, the first one challenges for me to identify an appropriate um, mix a partnership consortium, as Jean Marie also uh, mentioned before, uh, between innovative stakeholders that fit together in a consortium that will be able to guarantee a sustainable. Uh, project that fits all the eligibility criteria of this call. This is for me the most uh, the, the beginning of the challenge. However, uh, as I mentioned before, the opportunities are bigger because once those links have been established, they have been created, um, the creation of business bonds and networks between the innovative uh, EU stakeholders and the African stakeholders have an absolute positive impact um, that will be able to set up particularly their ability to follow up on those on those links, on those bonds, and scale them up into new opportunities for creating prosperous knowledge societies between the two continents. Um, the most important thing for this call is to, uh, to be focused on the four uh, areas of priority, which is public health, which is super relevant for this event that we are here today speaking together, the green transition, the innovative technologies and the capacities for science. Um, it is very uh, important that all uh, the, the candidates focus on those uh, four uh, priorities that are established in the framework of the, uh, of the collaborative uh, platform between the two continents. And um, it is very important to, to map the gaps and the needs that are uh, into those uh, four uh, priority areas. And in, in particular, to support the um, sustainable jobs and more importantly, for the young people in, in both continents, that they can meet, match together and create uh, networks and bonds that will uh, bring to more sustainable uh, collaboration between the two continents. I don't know if there is any 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 question. Uh, um, maybe another thing I could I could also mention is the Enterprise Europe network, which is also present in in Africa, of course, also in Europe, and uh, we do have uh, the, this network has also sector group. Uh, which is uh, based on, on health issues. So if the, the contact points in Africa could collaborate uh, more in particular with the ones in, in Europe about this sector group in particular, which is uh, very relevant, I think that would be also very helpful and could collaborate together with, uh, with the new call uh, beneficiaries and partners that will uh, take part to this call. I think this could be a very um, finding synergies between the the different uh, initiatives that the EU is doing for uh, collaborative coll collaborating with Africa. So, uh, so we, if I may just ask before we move to the final closure, um, you know, with regard to Horizon Europe projects that are funded in this digital health space, um, some of the speakers related to how we should take it to a marketplace. What is that pipeline and um, how is that pipeline moving towards the commercialization of commercial potential? Um, we have, uh, in fact, uh, AK Alliance is one of my, my beneficiaries and I think that's why I've been invited. And uh, indeed, as I mentioned before, we have several um, connect uh, projects for Mars in Europe uh, that are uh, three or four uh, all focused into, into, into digital health. And um, as you know, those projects are usually between two and three years. So I think the challenge is to make those projects sustainable. And the only way I can see is to follow uh, very closely the all updated um, uh, work program of the, of the Horizon Europe because there are uh, regular updates and see all the new calls that will be uh, published in Horizon Europe and try to find matches between the existing projects that are running or are just about to finish and how they can be scaled up with new calls that are being launched every year, which are somehow you need to find the way how to... Um, so if there's no fall, then technically you won't be able to scale. Yeah. But there are falls every year. 
<laughs> okay. so maybe this this leads us to just uh, if I can take five minutes and thank you so much for for staying if you can five minutes uh, this leads me to 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 maybe uh, last uh, free round from all of you as you shared already uh, call to actions and so on but we know that now currently the European Commission is also preparing the new framework program so some calls are still open from the old budget let's say but already planning for the new budget for the seven-year budget has started uh, we as ECH alliance within the project that sylvie uh, is monitoring on the site of the european commission recently published or submitted we didn't publish it publicly yet the five-year um, plan for the development of the digital health industry in europe and beyond and also in our um, recommendations, we we say that well we we would see we would like to still see more funding coming for this innovative ecosystems building strengthening through different methods and and tools. Um, we also actually mentioned there the the workforce, and I think from what you said, uh, you see also some priorities in those neglected diseases work on digital literacy, work on leadership, data sharing, regulatory work. Uh, and I wonder if, if you would like to have some other wishes or expectations on what those next uh, programs uh, prepared now by the European Commission, what those calls should include. So um, please speak freely, I think, if we can uh, have five minutes uh, short uh, talk on that. So we can start, Jean, Marie. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, the, uh, so the, one of the things which I've uh, noticed recently is what we see as indicators of where the need is, but also where the talents are coming up. So if we, we did launch calls earlier this year, that were looking at a, a, a list of infectious diseases, just as disease areas, HIV uh, or malaria, but also where the call, which was looking at a digital health solutions that, that would maybe just tackle all the things we are talking about. And one of the indicators that we were surprised, but also not surprised, is that the digital health was the biggest call uh, in terms of number of applicants. So it, it, show, it says a lot if we think about Sub-Saharan Africa, where you have a lot of talented uh, scientists working on HIV for many years. But what you see is that there's a shift that many of the researchers are taking time investing time in writing a proposal for the digital solution call, uh, whilst in the past would be maybe uh, TB or malaria bringing most of the proposals. So this meant that uh, there is a need to repeat that kind of call, but also to rethink of the design of the types of proposals we're looking at, because clearly the, it, it's a, there is a gap in terms of funding in this area, uh, but also there's a gap in, in terms of or the, the questions we'd like to answer. All these questions that maybe are in the core itself have been designed based on what we think are the needs, uh, probably not 100% based on what uh, is being informed by the field itself, as, well, as I was mentioning earlier. So, so the, what I'd like to, to mention here is um, as we design these calls as part of Varado New funding, or later in the future as part of the, the future framework program, uh, let's maybe learn the lessons, get the questions from the field to see uh, which, not necessarily a, a specific disease, but uh, which groups of uh, infectious disease, which group of countries, because we'd like also to address the disparity. We do have, if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, what's happening in digitalization in South Africa is not the same speed as what you'd observe in the Central African Republic, for example. So that, uh, to, 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 have, to have an equal field to make sure um, knowledge is shared not only across the Mediterranean, but also within Africa. We need to say we can use these type, types of calls to close the, 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 the capacity gap within the continent itself, uh, but also based on the on the types of disease that are prevalent. Uh, you, you do have pockets in Sub-Saharan Africa that have a lot of malaria uh, prevalence. And as if you look at the, other, the southern part where HIV maybe is the biggest question, um, East Africa being maybe a, a mix of both. Then we have a Central African zone, which has a lot of um, uh, political issues that also have an effect on, on the incidence of infectious disease. So all these things combined can inform future calls. 
Uh, so I've mentioned a lot of things, but in short, it's the, the, it's the disease burden, uh, it's the, 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 the economic financial disparities across countries, but it's also the, the instability, which, which tends to, to influence how this knowledge would like to boost uh, gets affected or leaving some countries behind. And maybe one last thing is that the, someone who mentioned calling for partners, need for partners. We do have a model in this trend undertaking where we have contributing partners. So if you are an SME or large company, you are welcome to, to co-invest with us. If you bring your funding, uh, then the Horizon Europe funding can be used to, 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 to add to what you got. And based on the needs in the field, we can together co-design a call for proposal. So your where you put your euro, you can also bring your ideas so that we, we design projects together mm -hmm. instead of we launching calls and using only plus of Europe money. So this mm -hmm. this tool of contributing partners is a route to, to say come with the money but also with the ideas so, so that we, we generate, we do research together, we invest in research together. Thank you so much, Jean-Marie. Uh, Caroline, I think we have reached our time. Uh, just uh, let me let me just uh, uh, quickly only say that I if we can still uh, uh, stay two minutes and uh, I also open the call here in the among all the our online participants we have here thirty two participants so I invite everyone to tap in the chat what are their ideas for the future calls for proposals financed by the European Commission or European Commissions in African Union of course, and where are the gaps in funding? And here we have uh, one comment from Innocent, regional learning collaborations and co-creations. I, I wonder if there is any anything else. Maybe if just one sentence uh, intervention, if, uh, I don't know, David, Andre, would you like to comment? Andre, yes. <clears throat> yeah, hi, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be super quick. I think it's been really interesting conversation, so thank you for that. I think what what I've heard from 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 the colleagues here is that there's already plenty of examples of innovative solutions being deployed, and the question is how can we scale it up also under the next uh, financial framework, and what are the let's say the missing ingredients? And I think also piggybacking on on what David was saying, it's not I think just about building kind of a strong economic case. I think it's about being able to demonstrate the overall impact. So I think if if I can say what are the areas that we should all focus on is is building this evidence of, of impact and also cost effectiveness, so overall value for, for money for those public investments. And in terms of how we can ensure there is ecosystem to scale up, I think there is a space right now for a strategic partnership around e-governance, data protection, ethical guidance, but also kind of scaling up computing capacities between Africa and Europe. And I think these can really support a, a kind of increased uh, diffusion of some of those innovative projects. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, it's been a wonderful panel. We've had such a lovely, engaging discussion. There are so many ideas and invitations to connect. I see that uh, everybody's put the connection details in the chat. So thank you so much for such an enriching discussion. And uh, until next time. So we close the session, Caroline. Any closing remarks from your side? And um, from me, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that this was a great opportunity for you to, to get to know yourself and start this conversation. I can only think that, uh, you know, I feel like we need to continue, that this, this should not stop here after this one and a half hour, that there is still so many uh, things everyone wanted to say, everyone wanted to, to learn uh, about. Um, at this moment, I can only think that the easiest way to continue this conversation is in November when ECH Alliance organizes a two-day online event uh, called Digital Health Society Summit, which is all about uh, digitalization and health data. So I want really, I will, I will bring this to the agenda, this um, data sharing between the continents, so that we can, uh, we can uh, speak about that and and how we can, uh, yeah. Um, work work this out uh, together, and if the European Health Data Space is, of course, voted today, uh, then this is also a, a wonderful opportunity to 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 um, discuss how we can build on that to create a digital health uh, health data exchange with Africa and Europe.
Thank you so much. This was a wonderful conversation, wonderful learning experience for me. Very nice to meet you all. And uh, yeah, until next time. And uh, thank you so much again to the to the organizers for having us.